This video will discuss the symmetry operations of molecules. So a symmetry operation can be defined as a geometric operation which leaves an object indistinguishable from its original position. So um, the examples that I'm going to show here on the right is I have some object here where I have a bunch of arrows pointing out of the plane of the board. So out of the plane of the board is, in, is indicated by the tip of the arrow coming towards us and then going into the board will be indicated by the X, kind of the feathered tail of the arrow pointing into the plane of the board away from us. So there are five main types of symmetry operations that molecules can have that we're going to be using throughout this chapter on symmetry and group theory. So the first is the identity. So the effect of the identity operator is to do nothing. So if I have this molecule where I have the I have each uh, particular lo location labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, and I do the identity on it, then I do nothing. It leaves the object unchanged, as you can see here. Everything is in the same place, pointing in the same direction. It is unchanged from its original <clears throat> uh, location. All right, the next is the inversion operator, where we are going to invert through a single point. That operation I have down here. So for example, the location one here is going to invert through the center there, go to the other side and be pointing the opposite direction. Two is going to go to four and point the opposite direction. Three goes to one, four goes to two, all of them pointing the opposite direction. Whenever you have a per location in Cartesian space like X, Y, Z, inversion brings you to minus X, minus Y, minus Z, whenever you invert through the origin. We have sigma, which is a reflection across a plane. So I have different examples of sigma here, uh, one of which I've labeled as sigma H for reasons that we'll see in future videos. But this, this plane is the plane of the board here. So if I reflect things through the plane, they all stay in the same position, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, but all of my arrows that were pointing out of the plane are now pointing behind the plane. If I have this plane, which I've identified as sigma v, for reasons that we'll explain in future videos, this plane is uh, perpendicular to the board here and parallel to this axis that I've drawn. So 1 is going to go to 2, 2 is going to go to 1, 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 3, and the arrows still stay pointing out of the plane because they were reflected across, but not uh, to the opposite side. Finally, we have uh, CN, the proper rotation by 360 over N degrees. So if I have something like C4, that is rotation by 360 over 4 is 90 degrees. So I have that indicated by drawing a kind of 90 degree arrow around this uh, axis here. I'm, I'm rotating around an axis which is coming, which is perpendicular to the plane of the board here coming out at us. I'm also rotating uh, counterclockwise is the usual definition relative to the direction where the axis is coming towards you. So 1 goes to 4, 4 goes to 3, 3 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, and they're all still pointing out towards us. If I do C4 squared, which would be like doing C4 twice, which is C2, so a 90 degree rotation followed by another 90 degree rotation would be a 180 degree rotation or 360 over 2 for a C2 axis. So C2 would be 180 degrees, 1 goes to 3, 4 goes to 2, 3 goes to 1, 2 goes to 4, and they're all still pointing out of the plane. All right. Uh, notice again that I went in a uh, counterclockwise direction relative to the axis coming out at me. And the last operation um, is improper rotation. So improper rotation, uh, where do I have it here? Improper rotation is defined as I do a proper rotation by 360 over n degrees, and then I reflect through a plane which is perpendicular to the axis I rotated around. So for example, S4 here, I'm going to rotate by 90 degrees, and then I'm, you know, end up wherever I end up. One goes to four, four goes to three, three goes to two, two goes to one. And then after I do that, I'm reflecting everything through the plane 
of the board here, which is perpendicular to my uh, C4 axis. So now all the arrows that are pointing out of the board are pointing into the board. So I have identity, inversion, reflection, proper rotation, and improper rotation. By these definitions, you can see that C1 equals E. Rotating by 360 degrees is the same as doing nothing, though so 360 over 1 is 360 degrees. The square of an operation is when you do it twice. The cube of it would be doing it three times, so C2 equals C4 squared. If I do Cn to the n, that's 360 over n degrees times n would be 360 degrees, which would be C1, which would be E. So Cn to the n would be the identity. If I do sigma, then it goes to the opposite side of the board. If I do it twice, I end up at my original side. So sigma squared is equal to E. My improper rotation, as I mentioned, is do a proper rotation, then, re then uh, reflection through a perpendicular plane. If I do an improper rotation twice, that's equal to the proper rotation, which has uh, twice the rotation. So remember, sigma squared is identity. So if I do this sigma twice by doing Sn twice, then I end up not doing the sigma at all, or equivalent to not doing the sigma at all. So for example, S6 squared would be C3, and S4 squared, you can convince yourself, would be equal to C2. And the inversion operator is actually equal to uh, S2. It's equal to rotating by 180 degrees and then reflecting through a perpendicular plane. So all of these operations are shown on Otterbein. They show the identity, which is to do nothing. They show reflection, where we have the example of, if this will load, hopefully, we have ammonia, and I can reflect that through any of the uh, three planes that I choose. Reflecting that through the plane, reflect it back, whatever you like. Inversion, inverting it through the origin. This one is somewhat difficult to see for the uninitiated sometimes, so when you invert, you're going to the opposite side of the origin that you started at. Proper rotation, one of the easier things to see because we're pretty accustomed to rotating things in real life. That's an operation that we can physically do. And then lastly, improper rotation, which they have example of ethane, has an S6 axis. So we rotate by uh, S6 would be 360 over 6 is 60 degrees, and then reflect through a perpendicular plane. So 60 degree rotation, and then reflection. 60 degree rotation, reflection through perpendicular plane. So that's the basic introduction to our five major symmetry operations, which we'll use in our subsequent videos uh, extensively on all different kinds of molecules.